What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM on this device and this is of course based on Android 11 Evolution X 5.1 and here you can see the build date is 22nd November 2020 the download size is about 1 GB and of course it includes the G apps and if you want to see the change logs you can really like go over into this website and you can read out the change logs over here as you can see and I'll put this post link in the description box below too if you want to go to the support group or something you can definitely do that from here and there is the XD thread listed and if you want to flash this ROM of course there is a card right there for you if you are moving from Android 10 to 11 you can follow that video guide to flash this ROM first let me talk about the stock launcher well this is still pixel launcher over here nothing new and to the left over here we have the Google Stress cover page and on the home screen if you swipe down you get the quick settings panel of course and if you swipe up you get the app drawer and I have disabled the suggestions over here and if you are noticing the widgets and stuff are working totally fine and yeah the whole UI is really really smooth and it almost like feels buttery smooth over here the whole UI and the first thing which I have noticed over here is the most amazing thing in my personal opinion that we get the ANX camera by default right now on this Android 11's Evolution X ROM and this is the first time I'm noticing an Android 11 ROM right now with ANX camera built in so that is really good I can go into the settings and stuff if you disable the shutter sound and stuff then location info if you want to disable those you can do that and you can go to the settings switching between the lenses are pretty fine and you can take like normal pictures super easily no issues and even in video settings if you want to go let me just switch to the front camera and as you can see the front camera is actually working fine without any issues and with the front camera you can shoot up to 1080p 30fps videos over here and if you are looking at the back camera you can shoot up to 4k 60fps over here and let me actually show you as you can see the 4k 60fps mode is actually working then there is the pro mode if you want to go into that and 48 megapixel mode is there and let me actually show you from more we can go to the slow motion and with the slow motion you do have the option to like take 960 fps 1080p videos like slow motion videos so yeah that is really great so everything is there on this ANX camera and it is working super fine and if you want to look at the version of this ANX camera or something you can go over here and as you can see this is the version 185 it says so yep the ANX camera is actually working fine over here and this is the stock camera over here now there is one more stock camera that is really interesting that is the Google camera go this has been working totally fine too takes basic pictures you can even take videos and stuff so yeah two cameras are present by default over here that is what I like about this latest Evolution X right now and I have also installed the Google camera 7 Unix version and I had to install it like separately so with this even with like the wide angle lens or even telephoto lens everything is working fine even with night sight everything is working fine no issues so you can still install like Unix versions Google camera and stuff like that pretty easily now talking about the quick settings panel this is how it looks like again and on this quick settings panel you have this screen recorder and as you can see you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time with this default screen recorder and that is really good that you get two tracks to record at the same time then you have the show touch screen like show touches on the screen I mean and we have the show to stop dot and stuff like that lower quality video if you want smaller size you can do that too so yeah lot of like features over here then we have the heads up disabling option always on display then we have the FPS counter too over here and as you can see the FPS is showing up on the top left so that is pretty good and you can also add multiple toggles from here let me actually show you as you can see there are a plethora of options that you can add over here plethora of quick toggles I mean now in the settings let me just jump into the about section so here in the Android version we have the Evolution X logo still up top and then if you're noticing the Android version is of course still 11 if I do this as you can see the Android 11 logo does appear so yeah this is still based on Android 11 of course and the Evolution X version is 5.1 Illionaire and official build we have the security patch as latest of November 5th 2020 so that is great and the stock kernel is still perf g kernel and the build maintainer is of course Joe Huab. 
and we have the build date as 22nd November 2020. In the system section, we have the system updated and of course you can check for update from here whenever there is a new update and the developer in my opinion is working really really hard to make this ROM even better with a lot of updates. So yeah, he's like still working on a next update. So if you are flashing Evolution X, good day for you. And if you want to update the ROM whenever you want to, whenever there is a new update, you can follow this particular video guide to manually update to the next one if you are on the same build. Now in the gesture settings, we have a lot of things over here as you are noticing and in the system navigation gestures, we have the Android 11 gesture of course. And there are like a lot of things right now over here like this amount of screen height as used touchable region for back gesture and stuff like that. So we have the full and then bottom part over here. So that is good. And we have the gesture bar length. This is for this like pill bars length. I have increased it. So that is why it looks like this. And we have the haptic feedback too. If you wanna have like the haptic feedback while going back and stuff like this, you can enable that. And two button and three button navigation both are there. Then we have the prevent ringing quickly open camera is there then swipe to take screenshot is there. So let me actually show you if I swipe like this as you can see there is a share edit and delete option. Let me actually show you again share edit and delete option is there. So you can edit and like mark something over here if you want to. Then we have the power menu controls. These are like the, for the device control and stuff. And by the way, this is how the power menu looks like again. And we have these like Google home controls over here. Then also we have the advanced reboot over here. So that is great. I'll show you the customization later on. Let me go back. We have the switch screen off. This is for the double tap to sleep on the lock screen or status bar. Then we have the skip music track, adaptive playback, etc. And we have this front camera sound effects. You can disable the front camera sound or you can enable like these many sounds for popping out the front camera. So yeah, and the Google keyboard is still default keyboard. Now on the Evolver section, we still have like a lot of customizations. Of course, I am really happy about it that the fourth fingerprint authentication inside lock screen is still present. So that means you can just tap the fingerprint scanner and it will unlock the device. So that is good. Like even after a reboot, you do not have to enter pin. This feature is still like there. So I'm really happy about it. Screen of fingerprint. So that is great. And fingerprint animations are there and you get still plethora of animations. I have been using it with the supernova. I'll show you the fingerprint scanner speed and stuff later down the line. And we have the lock screen charging info, then charging animation and stuff is there. By the way, 18 watt fast charging is working flawlessly, no issues with that. And inside status bar, we still have the same things like the vaulty icon and stuff. You cannot really change the vaulty icon, I think. And the icon manager is still there, so you can enable headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. Then battery bar, clock and date, everything of course is there. And status bar battery indicator, we have the next to the icon percentage showing up option. Then from the battery style, you can get the icon portrait, dotted circle, etc. But there is no big dotted circle right now. Let me go back and show you the notifications. We have the heads up disabling option. If you go here and you can customize it too. So that's good. We have the battery charging light. So you can enable the notification LED on the front camera, which is over here. So yeah, and the show on notification and stuff like that. This edge lighting kind of thing is there. And the in-call vibration stuff are over here. Fiber for connect and call waiting and disconnect as well. Now inside quick settings, we have the quick pull down. This is set to like to the right by default. So that is why as you can see, quick pull down is working totally fine, no issues. Then we have the smart pull down vibrate on toggle touch. Brightness slider, you can change the position of the brightness slider. Then we have the like column and row number customization, even when you are, you are in portrait mode or landscape mode both. And show tiles option is there like the tiles titles. You can disable that if you want to. Then inside power menu, we have this AOSP settings over here and hide on lock screen option is there. Now inside gestures, we have the AOSP gestures again over here. Then screen of power button toggle torch is there. This is for like whenever you are tapping and holding the power button, it will toggle the torch whenever the device is locked. That's cool. Brightness control is there. So I can just swipe on the status bar just like this to increase or decrease the brightness as you are noticing. And it is a little bit slow if you compare it to the Android 10 version. But I would say, yeah, this is great that we actually have it. And we have the switch screen off. This is again double tap to sleep and double tap to wake on those mode is there. Inside navigations, we have the gesture navigation again and we have the click to take partial screenshot and stuff like that. Now inside animations, we have the disable transition animation, then screen of animation, you can set to CRD or scale still and scrolling cache is there, list view animation, the whole UI animation pretty much is there. This is the power menu animation I have set it to glow. So that is why the power menu is appearing like this. If you set it to turn or something, let me actually show you as you can see the animation has changed. 
3D one is still there and yeah, I would say the glow one is actually like what I like. Now in the misc settings, we have the charging animation and over here, you can enable it or disable it as you like it. And we have this like USB kind of stuff. You can set it to file transfer. Whenever you are connecting your phone to PC with a USB cable, it will just open the files on the PC. So that's it for the customizations. Now inside battery, this is how it looks like. Well, this looks this dotted circle because I've said that status bar battery icons. And yeah, this is how the battery settings looks like. There are a lot of things like you can tap over here to see the full battery usage, of course. Then we have the thermal profile, battery saver, adaptive battery and last full charge and stuff. The screen on time appears over here. And the battery life which I'm getting over here, I would say is really, really good. As you can see right now, I have got about one hour and 46 minutes of screen on time. That is about two hours. And still I have got 82% juice left. This can definitely get you eight plus hours of screen on time for sure. And I'm liking the battery life, it is super good. And we have this like battery design capacity, then current battery capacity, charging cycle shows up over here. And there is also the battery temperature showing up. So everything you get over here. Inside display settings, we have the brightness level, night light, live display, everything is there. And color calibration, you can do that from here. Then we have the styles and wallpaper section. Then inside lock screen, we have some things like wake screen for notification and stuff. Then always on while charging, you can enable those if you want to. Double tap to wake pocket detection, both are there. There is also the anti flicker or DC dimming mode if you want to like have those. Dark theme option is there and you can enable it of course. Dark theme works flawlessly, no issues with that as you can see. This is working super fine. I have been using it with the dark theme, works great. And there is a clock style. So these are the lock screen clock style. You can change it to whatever you like. And as you can see, there are the lock screen clock styles. These ones does not show over here for some reason. So yeah, and there is the accent color customization. Plethora of accent colors are still there. As you can see, you can just scroll through them. A lot of options for the accent colors. Then we have the headline and body fonts. We have these many headline and body fonts. So yeah, pretty much a lot of option again. And we have the icon shapes over here. Now inside sound settings, this is how it looks like. You can have the volume panel to the left side and you can enable that. And you can like expand the volume panel too, as you can see. Then you can control the media, notification, alarm, volume, etc. And you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from here. Then we have the live caption mode from here on the bottom on the volume panel. And vibrate option is there. This is like always vibrate or never or first vibrate then ring gradually and stuff like that. We have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option too. So that is great. And we have the live caption mode, media option. Then we have the dial pad tones, etc. Screenshot sound, you can disable that. And we have the audio direct. So that is great. Let me actually go over here, force closed for some reason. But it does work and as you can see, I have set it to Youth Edition and with this sound quality via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well is amazing. You can also have these sound presets so you can set anything and Hi-Fi audio option is still there. So that is really good. Now inside security, there is nothing much except for the pixel imprint or the fingerprint stuff because right now this is too soon to expect like face unlock or even app lock over here because this is Android 11. Right now, let me just show you the fingerprint scanner speed. Let me double tap on the status bar. So right now from the always on display, I'll just tap over here with my right hand thumb and it unlocks. Let me do it with the left hand thumb and still unlocks from the always on display. From the lock screen, unlock super fine. Just look at the animation. It is really, really like fast and snappy. And yeah, it has unlocked again. Let me actually try with the night light turned on. So I have turned on night light. As you can see, the display goes yellowish. From the always on display, unlocks. Now from the always on display, again night light turned on, still unlocks. Okay, night light just turned off for some reason. I don't know why. Let me actually double tap again. So yeah, right now the night light is on. Let me try. Okay, still it works. Right now, I don't know why the night light is going off again and again. Maybe because I'm tapping over here. So from the lock screen, night light turned on and still unlocks. Now from the lock screen again, night light turned on with my night light is going off and on as you can see over here. I just turned it on again from the lock screen again with the right hand thumb, night light turned on, lock screen and it still unlocks. No issues, but the night light is turning off automatically. I don't know why. Maybe because the night light icon, as you can see, it is here. So I'm tapping on this side, it is 
like acting like I'm turning on night light, maybe, I don't know. And you can just slide a finger from the corners to like trigger Google Assistant. As you can see, the Google Assistant just appears whenever you trigger from any of these two corners on the bottom. So that is really good. And yeah, works great, I would say. Now talking about the performance, I have had no issues regarding like any performance glitches or any like performance drops. I have never seen any lags or stutters with this Evolution X version and pretty much it has been working really really great for me at least. Now let's open Instagram, Twitter, Play Store, okay I opened Play Store already, it's Google Home. Now what else should I open, DRM Info. By the way the DRM Info is like still level 1 so that is good and the safety net test let me open it as you can see the safety net passes that means you can use banking apps right out of the box let's open flipkart telegram right now let's open this me home app now let's open all these apps from memory again and here are the android and geekbench score of this rom if you are wondering about the performance scores or the benchmarks and as you can see all the apps are staying in memory without any issues and you can switch between apps just like this or you can go to the recent panel and you can also take a screenshot or select in a text if you want to then we have like the other options like split screen and stuff if you tap on this top icon you can pin the app or pause an app so yeah lot of options are there and I would say the whole UI stays really really snappy even when you have a lot of apps opened so no issues with the performance so that is pretty much it guys about the 22nd November 2020 build of the evolution X version 5.1 for the redmi k20 pro and this is of course based on android 11 still working great and there is already a new update coming soon I guess so if, if you guys want to flash this from pretty much you can definitely go ahead and flash it because I feel this is really really stable and smooth experience over here overall everywhere and talking about the stock dialer this is how it looks like and we have the video calling option speaker option etc but no call recording option as such as of right now and this is still the pixel dialer over here so thank you so much for watching this video guys and share this video out with your friends if you want them to know about the latest evolution x rom and i feel this is a really great option let me in the comments what do you guys think give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now